Jesus was Jewish, Paul was Jewish, Peter was Jewish, so can we really say they invented a new religion? When did Christianity officially part ways from Judaism? Welcome to the second episode of Varieties of Early Christianity. You can check out the last video right here. In that episode, I show that this evolution tree of Christianity just doesn't accurately reflect reality. Christianity was diverse from the very start, and what we know as Christianity today grew out of a supernova of competing theologies and communities. Well, today we are going to push that evolution tree back one step further, back to a time when Christianity and Judaism were not distinct. Today we are covering one of the more controversial topics in early Christianity. When did Christianity and Judaism officially part ways? Now, it might go without saying that Christianity started as a Jewish sect. That is to say, almost every Jesus follower from the first century was Jewish. And with the possible exception of Luke Acts, all of the New Testament books are Jewish texts. So at least in the first century, we can't say that Jesus followers constituted a whole new religion. Guys like Paul were cultural critics and reformers looking to make radical changes to Judaism, namely inviting in non-Jews into the Abrahamic covenant promise. They weren't really looking to start a whole new religion. But by the second century, Roman authors started talking about a weird new group called Christians. And some authors start using the Greek word Christianismos which we translate as Christianity. The Church Father Ignatius was the first one to use this term Christianismos, comparing it in opposition to something he calls Judaismos, Judaism. But if anyone should interpret Judaism to you, do not hear him. For it is better to hear Christianismos from a man who is circumcised than Judaismos from one who is uncircumcised. So you might be thinking, Christianity and Judaism, Ignatius thinks about them as two separate concepts. Case closed. Christianity and Judaism parted ways around 116 CE, around the life of Ignatius. But not so fast. When Ignatius uses the term Christianismos and Judaismos, is he really talking about a system of beliefs and practices? talking about two separate religions? Well, no, he's not. He's defining orthodoxy and heresy, like what we talk about in the last video. The scholar Daniel Boyarin has a lot to say on this issue, and if you want to answer this question in depth, please read his book Borderline, The Partition of Judeo-Christianity. Dr. Boyarin reminds us that this term, Christianismos, was invented before our modern concept of religion. So early Christians defined it differently than what we would expect today. Their term Christianity referred to something different than our term Christianity. So what did Christianismos mean to ancient Christians? Was Christianity a whole new race? A whole new ethnicity? Something completely different? Dr. Boyarin writes, For these Christian thinkers, the question of who's in and who's out became the primary way of thinking about Christianicity. The vehicle to answer that question was, again for these Christians, orthodoxy and heresy. So when Ignatius uses this term, he is trying to show that identity within Christianity is not based on language or history or geographic location, which so many ancient religions were based on, but whether you believed or practiced the right stuff. But as we talked about in the last video, we need to be very careful to distinguish between what an author is writing about and what was actually happening on the ground in society. This clean break between these two communities was not playing out in society. A lot of our assumptions about Christianity and Judaism parting ways is based on our privileging of belief over practice. From our modern perspective, this makes a lot of sense. A lot of people would define Christianity as believing in Jesus as the Messiah. But in antiquity, religious identity came just as much from religious practice as it did belief. So for example, let's take a hypothetical ancient man from Antioch. This guy was born in a Jewish family, lives in a Jewish neighborhood, attends a local synagogue, celebrates Jewish holidays, and married a Jewish woman. Oh, and by the way, he also believes Jesus is the Messiah. So what is he, a Christian or a Jew? Well, for all intents and purposes, he's Jewish. We are importing our own modern bias, our own modern criteria of what constitutes religious identity onto this guy if we assume that his belief in Jesus outweighs his religious practice. The thing is, this guy is not so hypothetical. Our ancient sources talk about Christians attending synagogues, keeping the Sabbath or feast days with Jewish friends, betrothing their kids to Jewish families, and marrying Jews themselves. Religious practice, the way these people actually lived, blurs our easy categories between Judaism and Christianity. It blurs Ignatius's categories too. This is why Daniel Boyarin says belief in Jesus is not a good enough criterion to say that 
Christianity and Judaism parted ways in the first or early second century CE. Because in so many other ways than discipleship to Jesus, early Jesus followers shared a lot in common with ancient Judaism. In fact, some early Christian groups had more in common with Jewish groups than they did fellow Christian groups. So for example, the Ebionites were a Jesus-following sect that saw Jesus as the Messiah, but they rejected that he was a god, and they insisted on following Jewish law. Another Christian group, the Marcionites, rejected the entire Hebrew Bible and saw the god portrayed in the Hebrew Bible as an evil deity oppressing humanity. So when you compare these two groups, the Ebionites and the Marcionites, Marcionites, sure, they both believe Jesus is the Messiah, but the Ebionites have a lot more in common with traditional Jewish groups than the Marcionites. Since Christianity and Judaism were so diverse in the first century, it's impossible to talk about a single point in time when these two religions parted ways. Some Christian groups maintained very close contact to Jewish communities and held on to Jewish practices well into the fourth, 5th and even 6th centuries. Later church authorities like John Chrysostom complain about Christians hanging out with Jews, and the Theodosian Code tries to outlaw these interactions. But they probably didn't have that much effect on the general populace, because they were trying to impose an orthodoxy versus heresy dichotomy onto a society that just wasn't playing along with those rules. So in the 1st and 2nd century CE, we don't so much see a parting of ways between Judaism and Christianity, but we see what Daniel Boyarin calls a partitioning within Judaism, when certain Jesus-following groups started to distinguish themselves apart from mainstream Judaism. Authors like Ignatius enforced this partitioning, saying that Judaism and Christianity are completely different things, and some Christian groups like the Marcionites did go off on their own. But on the ground, Christian and Jewish communities had a lot in common. In some cases, the overlap makes them almost indistinguishable. The idea of a parting was a textual theme articulated and developed by an intellectual minority, beginning in the early 2nd century. It was an ideal strongly urged by some members of the church in the 4th century, and ineffectually legislated in some pockets of the Roman world in the 6th century. I'm not claiming that this parting never happened, it obviously did since we have two separate religions today, but this parting did not happen at one point in time, and it happened under different circumstances depending on the location around the Mediterranean. As always, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.